correlation with Jupiter is exactly the that way. So we are trying really to squeeze everything we can to get all the detectors through the, the last observation of Jupiter and the Jupiter tracking. Okay, that's just a, a, a nice walk, a, a nice little drawing of the of the focal plane, uh, which shows the field on looking at, at the telescope, which are attached to the four K box, which is the other box here. Uh, and in this Russian model, then there is another stage which is 1.6 K, and you, you find here on on the plate here all the filters. Uh, there is a set of uh, so that's fed by uh, another set of forms, a uh, system of back to back forms, which may basically uh, uh, get takes here uh, more or less parallel to the and then you have another set of forms to the bottom of the of the ambiguity, and this is the heat exchanger of the dilution cooler. And obviously, uh, all these states should be isolated, so you, you don't want uh, any of these, uh, the ones which are Mechanically, you don't want to any leaks, particularly, but at the same time, you, you don't want doing the launch the vibration lead to these things uh, short, making short circuit form. So that's the that's beast. Some stability was supposed to be good enough to have no, no systematic concern of change in the world of this. But this, this remains true. No one will have to connect of the electronics of the system. So uh, basically, uh, many of the systems the system works basically as it was working on the ground. Uh, and, and as expected, it's very slightly better than expected. So that's one of these. Uh, Parameters. Uh, it's one of the polarization sensitive parameters to the static group. Uh, all that was initiated by Adam Lang and a few other big campaign. So the NEP was supposed to be for the same picture of about 10 minutes, and it was not about 5 minutes. Okay, I'm not going to describe that in detail. As you know, getting the cooling down to, to 0.1k is a difficult exercise. So we have basically passive cooling to about this less than 40 Kelvin uh, telescope and battle. Then we have uh, a hydrogen torsion cooler built by GPL, which is a powerful machine because it provides more than one watt of cooling power. And it cools both systems. So it cools the low frequency instrument uh, receivers. Then there is a active compressor system which leaves another uh, cooling for the resumption expansion of 4K. And we had only one of those. Uh, in the initial design, we had several of those and we were very worried about vibration. And in fact, these things are not uh, other ideas not been good vibration because of the uh, electromagnetic activity. <coughs> balance of the satellite were moved from one place to the next to the radar electronics. So that shielded for it. Uh, and that was where it was to figure out what that Last time we saw Blank on the top of the area uh, five. So uh, cool down, I'm not going to describe it in detail, you can see from the 14th of, of May uh, to the uh, First of uh, July, uh, basically we got to 100 millikay. In fact, we got to, to uh, below 100 millik 
here on the surface, right? And uh, that was basically within less than a couple of days from what was expected from test and, and we got to this number uh, with the lowest, as I said, the lowest flow of the cube. So that was having a continuous six parts. So we have electronics of, uh, of this, and it's, uh, it's a modulated uh, bias, uh, modulated bias, which was supposed to provide no one of the as you can see from the uh, ten minus four hours, on the resistor of the power very well done. There's uh, no effect of all right now. It's been all this right? Uh, and if you take out the photo noise uh, for the polarity of the pine, uh, we compare with that. The white part of the noise is the same. Uh, I will show you, in fact, there is some extra low frequency noise. It's not coming from the radar. It's not coming from the radar. Uh, so we have some low frequency noise which was not seen in the ground, and I will tell you what, what are the differences now. Uh, not just taking the white noise part and comparing uh, the gold and the blue one is the one we measure on, on the ground for that. See that basically the modulation of the cosmic rays by the sensitivity of the cell mm. is in fact quite homogeneous. You could see, you could see it uh, on the three spacecraft almost. Mm. Uh, so I'm quite similar, so it means that these homogeneities are quite big. Uh, if you use that and you look, this the right here is the uh, the power of the PLP on the polymer of space. And it's, uh, in fact, we are still, we started with that. And basically, we never really interested. We started at uh, 5 meter, meter watts. Uh, and it had some small changes, but basically, we are, I think uh, last week we were at 6 nanowatts. So we were within 1 nanowatt of the start. And there have been some, some small changes for that 1 nanowatt. Uh, and these changes, if you remove, you do the correlation with that, very well correlated, and remove it, you get to that. And there is a small drift of the dilution itself, uh, which is related to a small change in the pressure, because the pressure which is delivered, uh, the pressure regulator, is not exactly the same. It, it slightly depends on the, on the pressure inside the tank, and so it's adjusted to go slightly down and then up during the whole of time. So uh, this is the trend we have. You remove that trend and get that. And that's, uh, there we see that basically, when you start with this power spectrum from the temperature and you remove that, you get the blue one, which is very flat. 
timelines are the way three kilometers, so two kilometers and a dark kilometer, uh, 143 gigahertz, uh, 3 millimeter to kilometer per second of time, and dark kilometer, and all these are the big shields of Katika. So to show us that basically there are many of them, there are more of them than we expected, and we have trouble to understand why. Now I think we more or less understand all the big ones are about what we expected, which are really cosmic rays from the kilometer. Most of the small ones are now uh, almost detected for sure as uh, it's on, on the way of silicon in which the product is built. And uh, for some, basically we see the glitches coming from, from the way of silicon. It's very likely that the extra noise we have at the flow frequency is also coming from that. Because when we have the two independent barometers of the polarization, So we have to live with that. That's the part which is different, is that we can remove those very well. Uh, we have to live with the low frequency noise which is left. After that, uh, only not degrading very significantly the performance as far as we can see. So that's basically uh, all the data which have been used for the uh, Paper we, we did uh, beginning of the, of the year. You do differences between two half of the maps. In fact, done basically, and we stay on the same side from the sky for for half one hour. So you take one first half and second half, and so you can see the noise of the sweep. The big channels here. Uh, and basically, if you measure it in, in this region here, it's really exactly where, where it was expected. Uh, you have also dotted lines and, and full lines. The dotted lines, and when you remove from the sky, uh, half of the sky, which is more exactly far, you do a difference, so the signal should go out. And basically, there was a small problem of pointing. Are not yet adjusted, well, same which we have typically 30 arc seconds, which we have left, which are corrected now. So most of that was coming from a different side. So this is not the final thing. You could see that some low frequency effects also are systematically know about now, but there is some low frequency effects. So just pre computing with measured values in flight, with the white noise. Combining the three CMB channels, you do get to this number of 0.3 micro K for one degree uh, of the mass. Okay. Uh, that was the maps which were shown uh, and which are in the paper we published also earlier. We put them on, on the archive by the general. So these are the six channels CMB removed. So basically it's the only four count. And uh, basically you can see the noise in fact is in the maps. Just a pretty image on the intercellular uh, medium uh, in the galactic uh, in the direction of the galactic center of the body. So 
first cosmology will come uh, starting to be and uh, the end of the year, <laughs> that time. Uh, and that's things which were in the focal group. So it's basically really what we hope to do on, on, on the CLN, for the comparison with the new map, uh, or the uh, TE mode. At this point, we have no reason to believe that there's nothing we, we see in the data for which we'll be sure that that is degraded. We're not sure yet that we can clean the systematics at that level. But we have no, no proof that there is something which is not which can be taken care of. Okay, so that's for the general situation. So it's, like, it's a pretty good. Uh, Or a jump of that of scientificity of that compared to the previous satellite, uh, it's, a good, uh, it's a good situation to be really in, in line with it. Okay, let me go to the cosmic infrared uh, Just a few general considerations about this. Uh, there is an old problem, which is still with us. Structure formation theory tells us that basically the spectrum of halos which are collapsing at such a corner of the SF10 are dominated by, by objects of the range at the third and the eighth solar masses. And uh, could expect, uh, that was the expectation uh, a couple of years ago, that uh, we would see a light that shift uh, a lot of small blue galaxies. which came mostly at the beginning from the 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 it was quite surprising because uh, in, in the local universe, only one cell of the energy is coming to point one. And let's say the relatively simple reasoning about dust evolution and so on has told us that this number of data has gone down when you go to higher action. Just the opposite. In fact, uh, if you go beyond point three, it's dominating, it's more and more dominating. Then after the launch of ISO, uh, the ISO CAN instrument did a deep survey of the upper deep field at 15 microns, showed you a few objects, and you see the image which was that, the most useful image of the upper deep field, many, many galaxies, and there was a few count of about a dozen of objects on the now the resolution in comparison with the ETF. The surprise was if you took the energy at 15 microns and basically take the standard SCD of infrared galaxy, you find immediately that basically this huge infrared galaxy were contributing as much energy as all the galaxies. So that was something that I, I found that extremely striking when I started to, to think about what it meant. We didn't know exactly where, what was the ratchet of these galaxies, it was not so easy. Uh, one reason for which they were seen, uh, in the just in the case, it's just something like this, so, uh, was the fact that uh, the TH, which uh, were projecting exactly into the field, like in fact, it's a top one. And then we were seeing basically the object of the one for which the infrared is quite dominant. Uh, that was also. One thing. So, first time I did the computation of what was, what should be the luminosity of the galaxy which seems to be dominated the scene, which is what I was very surprised to find something which was pretty discreet at the end. So, the luminosity of the real star of the people who were People have been quite skeptical about this because I said that in more young school the first time that people were very skeptical about what they said. 
Well, this problem is going a long way. Uh, I've plotted here the unity function or the infrared galaxy as a function of what shape. You have taken from the test, but uh, the city is actually a maximum determinant vapor. And you can see here uh, the z equals zero unity function, and then uh, that's point 0.5. The green one is one. So you could see that basically you are already the need uh, to dominate uh, the output is between one and uh, three and the other. One point five is the blue. Two is this uh, purple uh, up dash line, and three is the blue one. And you see that basically then you go above. So basically, the limited function, as you go up in question, is dominated by a check which is which are bigger and bigger than this. Basically, an evolution which is completely going in the opposite way than the mass function. And if you look at the output of, uh, of the energy as a function of Pachi, you see it tries very fast to achieve from 7.8, and then it stays about flat, and then we try to say about what's going on beyond that and uh, at this point it's still not done. So we are we are in a strange situation where uh, the feeling I have personally is that uh, there are major things we major thing we don't understand in the star formation process and, and, and how it goes with the with the matter distribution. And uh, I think that all all the explanations people have been uh, physics people have been putting in the model is quite ad hoc and uh, but it does not give us the answer. So these questions are uh, what, the, what redshift do we do we see the infrared uh, commuting, commuting luminosity per uh, commuting volume start to decrease it should be somewhere. So far we still not see that and still way above the why is the, the star formation rate that I have not correlated with the core dynamic dark matter in the last stable? And why it's, so, why it's so different from chemical flow? Because if you have a chemical flow which applies the first object which are going down, you get a huge of star formation early universe, which is not there. So people put to the other atom with minimum mass, you know, which uh, you, you say star formation. And answering this question is it, very difficult from an abstraction point of view because the lack of sensitivity and resolution in the far infrared, in a lot of work and, and, and very, very fast progress in the sensitivity and, and also the type of telescope we are using, we are still not adding a machine which can really observe infrared galaxies in the of the six, Alma would be able to do that. Uh, all uh, about the pressure uh, on the first floor for observation from the Alma. So I think Alma is not going to the deep, deep, large surface uh, immediately, unfortunately. And so uh, there have been a number of surveys in the current time as well, so it's a lot of progress. Uh, but we are still not able to understand this question. And so the CIB, which is basically One element we can use now to try to see if we can get something. The absolute photometry of CIB is not always too difficult, but it's not more COVID, but it's not very difficult. And it's, you ought to do better than COVID, which I don't think is good. Some people have been considering it. Uh, it's not a trial. Uh, 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 CMB experiments might detect the CIB dipole. The idea of anthropy has been observed as part of the existing, some of the older work has like come to the more recent one. So I was confronted with that one specifically at the time. So I know that it was mostly a bagage work, both version and so on. 
So the idea is to use that to try to see if it makes some sense out of the question. Right. Uh, in fact, there is a rather relatively well known form of telekinesis <coughs> and two levels. means that basically when you look at uh, the log n log s number of forces defined as a function of uh, flux, in this, in this uh, range of uh, wavelengths starting from the million five and going to the million, you find this strange behavior. So all these plots are, it's a uh, dnds times s to the 2.5, which basically brings you Euclidean distribution of the flat. Okay. And the effect of the redshift bringing more and more the peak into your band at some wavelengths creates something which is very different from the behavior of the sources in, in the radio or the optical, for which when you go to uh, faint sources which are redshifted, you get something which goes down. It starts going up before going down. And that was two or three my friend. Well, it was more true at 24, 70 microns is far below, but 100 microns is quite, 760 microns is quite far. And if you go to 500 microns, you get basically a factor which is almost 100. What's the parametric factor as well? It's basically, you take, uh, this, this refers to the unity function, that. You build an unity function which fits that. Uh, so you, you basically don't try to understand the physics of that, but you try to see what is the function and to make sure the CDs can be So, um, you start how many parameters would be in a parametric factor model? This was at a highly non-linear model, mostly. Yeah, but uh, under the too many parameters, surprisingly enough, you can take for normal galaxies, which are, which are the galaxies which are not is it, is it but doing it higher than
set up on the data here. And that's very long with next radio. This part being uh, so expensive. <coughs> now the situation. So that has an interesting uh, consequence. So going back to the <coughs> yeah. so that so there's another approach which is um, I know everything about the OS plan and CDM, so it's top down. Um, is that actually can one get an explanation of uh, this so very simplified kind of form? Or is that no, 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 that's that's really something so, so that's a real it has, to, right? it has to do it has to do with the fact that basically well, there are a few collapsing objects, massive objects that are fetching new form that surprises basically it's, it's completely dominated by that. There's very little action going on. So, so the small guy, yes. but, but those the small guys are rather important in the cluster. No, 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 no. So, so it's better than you said? You know, yes. Yeah, that, that was the model we used. So one might almost say better than you is universal. A universal profile, no? Now to what we have done with the black data so far. We took six fields, which are very clean fields, typically uh, not only dark, but say which are 0.5 to 2 10 to 20 in color in one So it's pretty much just an example. Thank 
CMB, because when you, you remove the CMB, in fact, uh, uh, you don't remove that. So that, that could be either the CMB itself or this fee, because it's not in the dictionary. The CMB is not in my comment on the No, 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 no. Well, we don't. So, uh, if I just, uh, if I put my same SED, you could see that when you reach 217, not even having the speed there, you are very substantial redshift. Uh, and so, you will walk in redshift as you are moving uh, from frequency to frequency. As you will see, the CIP is very correlated between these two bands, start to decorate here. The 217 is quite different. You see uh, some components here which are weak here, and so you do start to see a margin uh, ratchet. Just one thing here is that model using this type of uh, model, simple model, uh, is just showing for the energy distribution of the CIP what is coming from various ratchets. And you could see that basically uh, very small ratchet uh, here are not This one is 0.3 to 1, creating 1, so it makes a bulk of the, of the peak. Then you go to 1 to 2, redshift, which is blue uh, which is starting to get a uh, non-negligible fraction of the peak, but so start dominate, uh, let's say, for example, it's uh, same here. And when you look at the uh, redshift larger than peak, uh, it's a dominate. So we don't know exactly what the redshift distribution, but obviously you expect basically 217 to be, to be uh, dominated in this model by C0. So if you look at that, you could see, I'll do it again. So you look at that, that's 550, 350, 217. And our structure, the structure uh, that you see in the highest frequency disappear more or less. Some of the features you see here and you don't see in the highest frequency, you see marginally in the structure. So that is the size we have to take, which is to identify basically uh, uh, the image of the That has nothing else. So that's the average over the of the various power spectra uh, shifted across the other point. Uh, a large difference uh, in your expression in micro uh, So that's basically, these are very similar at the beginning. Uh, the one which starts changing shape is that, but it's very marginal. Just something about comparison with uh, the other experiments which I've been doing, this kind of exercise and doing uh, CLD uh, measurements, so SPT, blast, spire. This is the end of the extracting the CLD. I don't think so. It's a little bit of a count. Data, that's the SPT which starts getting uh, 
and the model, uh, in fact, uh, one of the, the best, one of the models uh, is to be feeling very good. Uh, I don't want to detail all of that, there is the blast and, and, uh, and file data also, uh, especially uh, when comparison with file at first was not fitting shift with that. Uh, there has been some exchange and so on, and basically there are three words, there are four in and in fact uh, there are four five here with that data. And basically uh, I think uh, the shift the shift has been understood uh, in, in, in several elements, especially uh, when uh, we need to, to account for the sources which are not uh, as we move Mask sources on them. So, so one different which was that. So um, the first results of Spire were off. Yes. So now they've been corrected. Is what you're saying. Yes. And we they're now in agreement. We uh, published something which is in agreement. And, and what was the major error that was made? Uh, one of them was this business about the way to take into account the sources which are below the threshold, which are above the fire. The one how much you mask, uh, and they really do it. Uh, was another, I think, what, what was the other discussion with them? No, it's been an exchange between. Are there a universal agreement that. And now that, the, yeah, that, that was that's a uh, republished by. Uh, Basically, it was not comparable exactly because uh, the number of points uh, uh, that came out of the uh, right change. Because that we were worried about that. And trying to so, yeah. Uh, so there is one more word here that um, act cross black uh, measures the uh, clustering part of the target response um, at at four signals. So one thing is just looking at the level of the fluctuation we measure in these four bands, that's the fire ass, CID, SCD. It's basically following pretty closely the fit was done. In fact, it was two fits, there was a fixed one and the spare one. Uh, uh, basically, uh, so the blue one is a, is a fixed one, the green one is a, is a spare, and, that, and uh, basically the constant ratio Finish with uh, the Frank team uh, working with CIB has, has developed also a modernization uh, of, of the CIB power spectrum. Uh, the way it's done, and it's with the four frequencies, uh, the green uh, dot dash line is the Poisson. Yeah. 
So far, I mean, uh, I go to my last slide, which is next question, but you go. Uh, whether our goal is to develop foundation, we want to enlarge, seems to be possible, thousand square feet or more. Uh, total being about in, in, in this. We want to try to extract it as the idea of the It's a complicated uh, separation problem.